Hey book friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my April wrap up. You guys, I think I found two, two new all time favorite books. I just cannot stop thinking about these. Actually one's a book and one's the end to a series. And so I am so excited to share those books with you along with some others. I read quite a few books in April. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back, all the things. So now, let's just hop in. I read seven books and had one DNF for April. So this is a high reading month for me. Not sure what happened, but I was just in the mood to read and I just found some really good books. So let's just chat about the books in no particular order. I, I don't know. I just don't feel like ordering it. I'm going to start with one of my all-time favorite books. Oh my gosh, I finished the David Bad series. So this book is Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. It ends the saga of Nari and Ali and Dara as they have gone through so many things and this book just kind of, it ended it in such a good way. So broadly speaking, this is about Nari who at the beginning of the first book was an orphan in Cairo who accidentally summoned a jinn warrior named Dara. He comes to her and he realizes that she actually has maybe some magical powers. There's something special about her and, and he better get her to the city of brass or kind of the city of magic. And that first book really sets the stage with all of our characters, both Nari and Dara, as well as the current ruling family in Devabad, which introduces us to one of the princes named Ali. Now there are a lot of other side characters, but I'd say those three, those three just have my heart. I am such a character driven reader and I feel like these books did an excellent job of developing the characters, especially kind of the character arc over the three books, watching them grow, especially Nari and Ali, like how they grew from like who they were in the first book to the third book and some of the things that happened and the choices they had to make. On top of that, you have the character of Dara. Dara's character is so confusing. Not confusing in a bad way, but confusing in a very like morally gray sort of way where you're like, I really want to root for you, but I really shouldn't. But no, I do. No, I don't. And, and even his character kind of went back and forth throughout the series. So I feel like I loved that. I loved that about this series. So I know there's not much I can say talking about a third book, but really as endings to a trilogy go, this was top notch. Top notch, you guys. It answered questions, but not in a very predictable, like let's tie up all the loose ends sort of way, but it answered it in a very like, oh, that makes sense now. I get kind of where that was going sort of way. So anyway, I read this and I loved it. I loved it. All right, let's just flip to the other side of things. I'm going to talk about my DNF. So I DNF this book. I got about 120-ish pages into it. It's The Cartographers by Penn Shepard. Now this was a really popular book a couple years ago. I got it as a book of the month copy. I was challenging myself to read more book of the month books in April. And so I picked this up and I had such high hopes because it has kind of this fantastical mystery thriller sort of thing going on where our main character of Nell has been estranged from her father who is like this famous cartographer and then he mysteriously dies and she gets kind of pulled back into his life and pulled back into this world of maps and she comes in contact with a map that seems inconsequential and there's some like mystery and intrigue around this map. So that idea was super captivating, right? But the execution of it, at least in the first 120 pages, I was just a bit bored. One, I didn't like Nell. I just didn't like her character. I just felt like she was like kind of two-dimensional. Her motives, yeah, maybe made sense, but it also made her not very smart in her choices. And then there's this whole like group, this like secret group that's looking for this specific map. And I'm like, okay, maybe that could be good. I just, you know what? It was just boring. It was just boring. And I'm trying to DNF more this year. And so I just decided there's no reason that I need to keep reading this book. So I stopped. All right, and then another book of the month I read and I loved, I loved this book. And I ended up giving this book four stars. I really enjoyed it. And the book is The Maid by Nita Prose. This is a story about Molly, who is a very unique character. She grew up with her grandmother. Her grandmother has recently passed and her grandmother really helped her understand the world. Molly definitely has some neurodivergent characteristics, tendencies, if you will, that makes her just different. But I liked reading from her point of view. I felt like she was just genuine and sweet 
And yeah, some of, well, a lot of what she decided to do or how she thought through things didn't totally make sense. But in light of her character, it did. And so the story was basically, she works as a maid at this Regency Grand Hotel and then there was a murder, she's somewhat involved, she kind of gets swept into it, and her mannerisms are so that she actually becomes suspected of committing this crime, and it just really goes from there, and I enjoyed it. I would definitely call this cozy, and like I said, I don't really do cozy, but Molly the Maid, yes, I will, I will read some more Molly the Maid. My next all-time favorite book, The Women by Kristen Hanna. Now, I've always been a Kristen Hanna fan. The Nightingale was the book that brought me back to reading after I had had all my kids, like my twins at that point in time, I think were like a year and a half old. I'd been having kid after kid after kid. And then I picked that book up and it just sparked my love of reading, you guys. it I mean, I would probably say it re-sparked my love of reading. But this is her latest book, The Women, and it's about our main character of Frankie, who goes to Vietnam as a combat nurse. It's very much about her life, but it's also very much about the messaging of one, women in war, especially during that time frame, and two, just Vietnam War and how it all was handled, especially the re-entry of the soldiers was into American life and how hard that was and how terrible. At the same time of learning a lot about like PTSD and helping out our veterans with mental health. So all of that's wrapped up. Those aspects were just top notch because I'd say this book is really split. It's not equally split into half and half, but there is a huge chunk where she is in Vietnam and you are really feeling it with her. And I love Kristen Hannon's writing. It really brings it all alive. You ask yourself, would I have done that? Like, I'm kind of impulsive sometimes and she was a bit impulsive when she's like enlisted and then she ended up over her head, but she just had to keep walking, right? And you ask yourself, would I be able to endure what she was enduring in, especially those first days as she was learning in Vietnam and it was terrifying and all of these things, right? I don't mind like nurses and doctors and things like that. I love kind of medical drama type stuff. So I enjoyed that. <laughs> what I love about Kristen Hanna's writing, it can be, almost a little over the top when it comes to emotional and interpersonal stuff. Like sometimes I equate Kristen Hanna with like the thriller book, which has like twist after twist after twist. I feel like she does that with like emotional punch after emotional punch and it just kind of keeps coming and sometimes you're like, come on. But I still loved it. I still felt myself just emotionally dragged behind this character through all of it, through the relationship aspects of all the stuff and all the kind of war related, veteran related issues. I thought she handled it really well. I highly, 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 highly recommend this book. I'm pretty sure you'll be seeing this on my list at the end of the year. Loved it. So I have like four books left. Two of them though were a bit of a surprise. Not totally if you've been following my channel. But I started picking back up the Hunger Games series. It's a part of a read-along on Gwen's channel. Of course, I'll link her down below. And honestly, I wasn't sure if I was going to take along. I was like, I have lots of other things to read. But then it came available on audio and I didn't have another audiobook, And so I started listening to the Hunger Games again. The audiobook for the Hunger Games is so good. Really, it's the story, right? Katniss and the whole Hunger Games and PETA versus Gale and all the things. Like, I don't feel like I need to explain the Hunger Games to anybody, but... The reread for me was outstanding. And what's funny, you guys, what's funny? I thought I had only read this book. And then I was like, wait, there was some memories I had in my head of things that happened. And they didn't happen in that first book. And then when I picked up the second, I'm like, oh, they happened in this book. And it's really funny because now I'm wondering if I've read all three. Because I originally listened to them because I just purchased these because I wanted to read them I wanted to slow down and not just listen on audio and we're also planning on reading the prequel Snakes and songbirds, whatever it is and that's what I'm most interested in. I'm most interested in reading these three and then Assessing that book because I feel like it hit or miss with people But I think if you're recently come off of the Hunger Games, it could be really good So I read these two. I gave this one five star. I think this is just it's classic, right? You know it 
so many other books and movies were kind of came out of the Hunger Games. I feel like this was also excellent, not quite as good in my opinion, but still excellent, moved along the plot, and we'll see. We'll see what the third one is about and if I have actually read it before. So I read those and then I also read a little B.E. Schwab. So this is the second book in the Darker Shades of Magic series. It hasn't been too long since I've read the first one, so the storyline was fairly fresh in my memory. It's basically about kind of two main characters of Kel and Lila or Delilah. And Kel is a person who has the magical giftings to be able to move through worlds. And in this book, it's set up in London primarily, but there's different types of London based on color, white, black, gray, and red, and based on how much magic they all have. And so Kel can travel between the Londons. And in our first book, he runs into Delilah, or Lila, who is in Grey London, who has no magic, and she's kind of very much down on her luck, and things happen in that first book where she just kind of gets wrapped into his world, and it's pretty fast-paced, it's pretty fun, I enjoy the characters. It continued into this book. What I like is it really did pick up where that one left off, but it gave the characters a little bit of breathing room to kind of pursue some other things. There is a competition in this book. I won't say any more. I don't want to spoil things, so I won't even say characters because I want you to read the first one if you haven't already. But I do like competition, and I think it helped this second book to not fall into the middle book syndrome where it's just kind of waiting for the big finale. In my opinion, this one kind of held its own. It helped us really further the characters and their growth as well as it was entertaining and it laid the groundwork for the last book, A Conjuring of Light, I think, which I'm planning on reading in May. And honestly, I would call this a very approachable fantasy series, especially if you're not really in the mood for all the romanticy that's going on right now. This is solid fantasy, but very understandable, which I really appreciated. So I liked that. And then the last book, the last book I got from the library because it's a new release, so it's A Tempest of Tea by Hefsa Fazal. I haven't read any of their books before, so this was my first. I have the We Hunt the Flames or Stars on my shelves, and I still do want to read that. This book, though, I feel like while I was reading it, I was enjoying it pretty well, but upon kind of stepping back from it, there's some things I just really didn't like. So, all right. It's... A YA fantasy book, that's fine. It's about our main character of, I think, Arthi was her name, and her like business partner of Jin. They own this tea shop in this city. I think it was like White Rivers or something like that, in this city, and they serve tea during the day, but they serve blood during the night to the vampires. So this is definitely a vampire book without it being kind of the center of the story, although I think I would have appreciated more vampires. And I'm sure that that will come in future books or book. I can't remember if it's a duology or what. But the central plot of this book is it's a heist story. A heist story where she's gathering people to help her with this thing that she's trying to get in order to save her tea house. Her tea house has been threatened and now there is this plan in place to kind of reclaim it in a way. Now, that's really where I feel like it fell apart. For me, at least. I thought the heist could have been cleverer. I thought it could have made more sense. Like, I feel like to me, that was the part that, that kind of fell off the train where I was like, okay, I, I kind of see the problem, but the way the solution was kind of immediately presented, one, it didn't make total sense. And I'm not sure if like it was smart to kind of proceed that way. I don't know exactly how to put my finger on it, but it just, logically speaking, didn't make as much sense as I would have wanted it to, nor was it clever enough for me. I like high stories. I think they're really, really fun. This one just felt a little bit flat for me in execution, and I didn't care enough about the characters to really get hooked into the story, especially some of the characters that, like I said, it's YA, so there's a little bit of like light romance, okay, like flirting type of romance, and at least for one of our characters, I didn't think it made any sense. Like based on the character arc that was being developed for this person, I thought the way they responded and the way they acted and the kind of besotted, you know, where I'm just like, mm, I don't feel like that makes much sense. 
So that kind of threw me out of the story where I'm like, I don't need this. Is this just because romanticy is on the rise? And again, I don't know about We Hunt the Flames, I stars, whatever it is. I don't know if she's always been kind of a little light romance in her YA fantasy. So that might be true. And so it's not fair for me to be like, oh, she's just throwing that in because it's so popular right now. But that's how it felt when I was reading it. And so I gave this book three stars in the end where I liked it while I was reading it. I wasn't compulsively reading it, but I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. So it's, it's a pretty solid three stars for me on that. So yeah, I think that's all the books. That's eight books. And granted, two of them I listened like entirely on audio, so that kind of sped it up. But it was a really good reading month, you guys. Just thinking back to finishing out the David Bad series and just like, I want to read it again already. And the women, I want to read again and I want to annotate it. I really want to kind of dive into it. I feel like there's a lot of messaging in there as well as just some heartfelt moments for characters and things like that. So, oh my gosh, April was so Good. I feel like it's been my best month so far this year. And so that was my April, you guys. If you made it this far and want to leave me an emoji instead of making a comment, but I would love to hear also how your April went, what was a favorite book of yours. But if you can't think of anything, drop me, let's see, let's do a helicopter for the women. A helicopter emoji. If you want to just kind of say you were here, and I do appreciate everybody who watches and this little community here on YouTube. So I hope you all are well. If you like the video, like it, subscribe if you want to, all the things, and I will see you guys in the next book video. All right, guys, take care. Bye.